In addition to the traditional plowing techniques already demonstrated, there are other techniques and pieces of equipment in Iowa DOT's arsenal that further enhance the snow and ice removal process. When roads are heavily snow-packed or ice-covered, you may be called on to operate a truck equipped with an ice blade. When ice blading, it is important that equal pressure be applied to both ends of the blade. Some blades have only one control, so applying equal pressure is not a problem. Other ice blades have two controls, one to lower and raise each end of the blade. When operating a two-lever blade, it can be difficult to tell when you have equal pressure on each end of the blade. The ice blade can be angled left or right depending on which direction you want to direct the ice and snow. After setting the angle, be sure you put the locks in place. Setting the blade tilt or curl is critical when you are ice blading because you always want the sharpest edge in contact with the road surface. If the front edge is the sharpest, then you want the blade to be tilted like this. Likewise, if the back of the blade is the sharpest, you will get the greatest cutting action if the blade is curled like this. As an operator, you must frequently change the tilt or curl of the blade as the metal wears away. Changes in angle require only a slight movement in the ice blade. Check the wear of the blade frequently to make sure you don't damage the board. Ice blading should only be done on hard surfaced roads. Never ice blade on a seal coated surface. It can cause a great deal of damage to the road. Ice blades can also be used to help clear snow from the roadway. When used for clearing, angle the blade in the same direction as you plow and just touch the roadway with little or no downward pressure. Ice blades should be operated at speeds no faster than 10 miles per hour. Similar to the ice blade, the high-speed underbody plow is located under the bed of the truck to assist in clearing snow from the road. As the name implies, the high-speed underbody plow can be used at greater speeds and is ideal for use on multi-lane highways. The range of motion for these plows is more limited than ice blades since the ends of the blade cannot be lowered separately and the blade does not tilt or curl. High-speed underbody plows can be operated at speeds between 25 and 30 miles per hour, though they are more effective at slower speeds. As with plowing and winging, you must constantly be on the watch for obstructions that can cause damage to ice and high-speed underbody blades. Make certain you raise both types of underbody blades when going over railroad tracks, bridge expansion joints, and raised manholes. The V-plow is rarely used, but when it's needed, there is no other plow that can match its capabilities. The V-plow is generally called in when drifts are too big for straight plows to handle. And in most cases, that means that snow is totally blocking traffic. When you come upon a drift, set the V-plow down on its shoes and then evaluate what will be the best way to open the road. The best plan is generally to split the drift so you end up moving most of the snow to the side of the drift that is the shallowest. For example, Let's say that you were traveling west and come upon a large drift that is formed along the south shoulder and extends across the road to the other side. With this trip, you would probably want to make your first pass with the V-plow at the south edge of the road, planning to move most of the snow to the north side of the road, away from the deep part of the drift. Make your first pass through the drift with your wing up. If the drift is not too deep, the wing can be used with the V-plow to remove the remaining snow from the roadway. Many times, as with the example just shown, you will be able to plow all the way through without backing up. Large drifts are the exception. Instead of attempting to make it all the way through in one pass, make a series of thrusts into the drift, attacking one side and then the other. Move into the drift slowly. If you hit the drift with too much speed, snow may blow up and over the V-plow and fall between the plow and your truck. When this happens, you increase the risk of getting stuck. Excess speed can also damage the push arm on the V-plow. Be sure that you have a wide enough path behind you so that you can back out of the drift. If you get in too far, you may find yourself in the middle of a drift and unable to move in any direction. As with every time you back up, always look behind you for obstacles or other vehicles. Motorists have been known to follow plows right into drifts. There may be times when a drift is so large that a snowblower is required to clear the road. If this is the case, there are snowblowers and trained operators at select shops around the state that will be called in by your supervisor. Tow plows, sometimes referred to as trailer plows, pull a secondary plow behind the truck. When attached to a plow truck, tow plows can clear over two highway lanes in one pass at normal plow speeds. 
tow plows can help clear an entire roadway very quickly. Additional training is required and provided for operators assigned to routes which may utilize tow plows. Oftentimes, weather conditions require the use of liquid de-icing or anti-icing chemicals. In these situations, you may use a tanker or trailer to distribute chemical along your route. When operating a tanker, it is important to monitor your speed and rate of application to apply chemical evenly to your entire route. De-icing and anti-icing techniques will be further discussed in upcoming videos. As always, if you need further clarification or information on anything in this video, be sure to talk with your shop supervisor.